All right, and let's go ahead and bring up, geez, what's going on there? <clears throat> bring up the assignment and bring up the book where this assignment comes from, which is Crypto Neil Stevenson's Cryptonomicon. Now, I don't know, has anybody here read any of Neil Stevenson before? Not yet. No? Who? So, Neil Stevenson is one of those writers that writes um, very large books, door stoppers, weapons that can be used as, I'm sorry, uh, sorry, books that can be used as, uh, as blunt instrument weapons kind of deal. Um, so, Cryptonomicon is one of his books. If you were, although I would suggest if you, if you were to um, be doing one of his, uh, reading one of his books, I suggest like his most accessible one is the book Read Me, which is a misspelling of, re of Read Me. Um, it is about MMORPGs, cryptocurrency, the Russian mafia, Islamic terrorists, uh, Christian isolationists, um, and gold farming. It is excellent. You will learn more than you wanted to, than you ever thought you would know about Russian firearms. Um, it is, it is really good. Um, I also found Anathem to be very good. Um, it was pretty good. And Seven Eves is also very good, uh, which is um, about basically the moon exploding and suddenly the earth has only two years before, the, before it becomes uninhabitable and the effort that goes in to save humanity. So there's a lot of books he writes. This one he wrote, uh, Cryptonomicon, is about basically the 1990s, um, uh, basically building a digital haven, and then also dealing with World War II code breaking and tactical deception, as it puts out. Um, and part of what he did for that is um, he created is that he had something called the Pontifex cipher, um, also known as the Solitaire cipher, more formally, uh, which he had Bruce Shiner, a security professional expert, develop for him, if I'm getting this correct. Um, and because he wanted a, his characters to communicate with a real algorithm uh, using a deck of cards. Um, so that is what we're going to be implementing. We're going to be implementing something called the Pontifex, or the Solitaire Cipher. Um, the assignment is under week four. Um, there is a PDF that goes into detail about how it works. Um, I've also posted a video, or sorry, I've linked to a video over how to do, that shows manually how to do um, the solitaire cipher with a full deck of cards. Although two things, one, they're mathematicians, they might be using, I think so she'll start with one as opposed to zero for some stuff. Um, but regardless, um, the full, it uses also a full deck of cards, and we're just going to use 28 cards, uh, half a deck plus the jokers. Um, part of this has to do with the fact, and, but let me just go ahead and start, because I'm sure none of you have actually, I'm sure that some of you have done basically no encryption, right? How many of you have never had to deal with any encryption algorithms before? see yeah all right so let's go ahead and go over the very first encryption algorithm that everybody learns which is the cesarean cipher which is also and yes it comes from the same guy who the, who the cesarean section is named after the cesarean cipher let me go ahead and pull it up. The Caesar cipher, or Julius Caesar, who used it in his private correspondence. It is one of the simplest uh, encryption algorithms out there, but it is still worth knowing. So, um, the idea behind the Caesar cipher, by the way, is, and most encryption is military and keeping your uh, secrets. Uh, pretty much every encryption algorithm can be broken, 
Um, there's no such thing as a perfect encryption algorithm, except for one-time pads, which that, and even then you have different attack vectors. Um, but the idea here is that you want your military secrets to be kept safe for long enough. So that's what we're, so, um, now back in Julius Caesar's day, literacy wasn't that big of a thing, but it was important for generals. But if your messages did get intercepted, you wanted to make sure that nobody could read it. Hence a cipher, which is basically a way of, of scrambling your message in, uh, in a way that some that nobody else can read it except for the intended part, uh, recipient. So, uh, a ci so that is the big thing about a cipher. Um, which is basically scrambling messages. A cipher is basically taking a message and, and, sorry. A cipher is what you get when you take a message and convert it into a form that nobody else can read. This is as opposed to code uh, or creating a code. Such, you know, where basically you're speaking in plain, in a plain text or plain speech. People can understand it, but they may not understand the meaning such as a, did you deliver the package to Vinny? Yeah, deliver the package to Vinny. He's gonna get a nice big surprise, you know? And it's pretty obvious what people are talking about there, but they're not saying it, that's a code. So, the um, big, so the big thing with the C Caesar cipher is basically making it so that nobody can read anything. And the way it works is fairly simple. Uh, what you do is that you basically shift uh, everything three letters uh, forward. So let's see, Caesar cipher is rotated left or right by some members. So this is the left rotation. So anyway, I don't know why they're doing it left, but basically they're saying take a letter three back. I prefer to teach it three right. So basically anywhere you, te uh, anywhere you see an A, we're gonna give it a, we're gonna replace it with a D. Anywhere we see a B, we're gonna replace it with an E. Anywhere we, where we see a C, we're gonna replace it with an F. Make sense to everybody or, or am I losing people? That makes sense. Right, the common, so, um, so the message that we're going to encrypt is essentially the hello world message uh, of, of, um, of cryptography. Okay, that is the hello. That is the hello world in cryptography. So let's go ahead and see how to do the encryption using a Caesar cipher. So um, encryption is the act of of creating a cipher. Decrypt is the act of taking a cipher and and um, and basically res and basically turning it into plain text. So let's go ahead and look at encrypting. So public static string encrypt string message. All right. And then we give it a key. The key is basically gonna be how far forward we rotate the message, which for our examples, we'll be using three. So let's go ahead and return, and let's go ahead and create a string cipher text is equal to an empty string, and then we let's go ahead and return our cipher text. Okay, so now for every character in the message. So for so first thing I'm going to do to ensure this it works the way I want it to is that I'm going to simplify this message. A uh, message is equal to message dot lower to lowercase. So that just converts everything to lowercase. Uh, classically, you convert everything to uppercase or lowercase, but this is what is going to make it easier for us. Um, and essentially what we're going to do is that we're going to rotate every single message, every single letter, uh, three letters forward. So for car letter in message. Um, sorry, I was working in Python earlier. 
oh yeah, you can't use a you can't use the for each loop over a string because it's not iterable. But what you can do is then turn it into a character array, and you can totally do it like that. So for letter in, and this just simply turns the string into an array of characters, and then we can use a for each loop on that. So for every letter. Um, First thing I'm going to do is because we have spaces, if um, letter, let's see, if letter, um, we're going to change this later, but for right now, if letter is equal to space, continue. Eh, actually, letter, sorry, uh, ciphertext plus equals letter. So basically, if it's a space, we're just going to add it back in. All oh, right, attendance. I'll go ahead and start attendance. Let's see. Attendance, right, that's an attendance that I have to do. Bah, 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 bah. Let that load up. All right, next. So start check-in. There we go. So. Yeah, just check in sometime in the next hour or something. Okay. If letter is a space, add the letter. Otherwise, if it's a letter, what we're going to do, if it's a regular letter, what we're going to do is that we got to go and basically take the character and move it three, char uh, three letters forward. So that seems fairly simple. Let's go ahead and do ciphertext is equal to, uh, ciphertext plus equals a letter plus three. Okay, and now we're, hey, or sorry. Goldfish. You want more goldfish? Nuts. I will, I'm afraid you're gonna have to wait for a bit. Uh, you can go downstairs and get mama. Okay. Professor, I have a question. So, this this adding stuff to adding the number to the character that only works with characters. Right? It doesn't work with strings because I think there was this confusion last semester that I had in yes. Java. Well, I'm going to go into this in painstaking detail because this is not going to work. Oh. Let's go ahead and do. Encrypt message key. Let's do three. Uh, sout. Okay. Yeah, this is not going to work, but I have to show you why it's not going to work. And that's so. Let's go ahead. Oof! What what just happened there? Any any takers? Uh, is it printing out the ASCII codes? It yeah. is because let's take a look at letter plus key. Letter plus key. So again, this. So let's take a look at the first letter, which is A. Okay, A's ASCII code because I use it all the time is ninety seven. Okay, ninety seven. So 97 plus 3 is um, 100. So note that we have 100 right here. The first 3 is over here. So that is why we're getting 100 there, because a plus 3, lowercase a plus 3, gives us the ASCII code 100. So whenever you add an integer, like 3, to a character, right, what happens? It turns into an integer, and then we were concatenating it. So let's go. Let's go ahead and see. Uh, car. Car. Uh, Could you just cast that to car, or can you not cast integers to cars? Oh, I can totally cast it. I'm just seeing what's. I'm just demonstrating what's happening here. Uh, Note that if I do letter plus key over here, it says, "Hey, you cannot store an int." in a character. So what we do, what we can do over here is that we are going to basically do a uh, car letter plus key. So we're going to take that, add three to it, 
and then turn that ASCII key character and that ASCII value into a character. Which seems to work just fine, right? Okay. Make sense to everybody? So, yeah, it makes sense. If so you get like a, a Z in your original, ah, wouldn't it, wouldn't it like, it doesn't wrap is, back around. That is exactly what I'm going to do next. Okay. So thank you. I'm just going to go ahead and just type lazy dog over here. So what happened there is if we take a look at the ASCII, or the ASCII table, so let's go ahead and pull one up on, uh, um, let's just go ahead and pull this up over here. If we look at the character for lowercase z, z's value is 122, and three below that is closed curly brace, which, as we see, see here, was this in lazy. Everybody following along so far? Use the chat if you're not, please. So I'm going to go ahead and yeah, so encrypt. So actually, for this one, I think what I'm going to do is yes. So everybody, so what we're gonna do is now I'm gonna actually rewrite this a bit and I'm gonna do the encryption in inside a bit differently. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna work with basically a single character, just to simplify things so that we don't have a for loop, okay? All the other control is gonna be outside here. And the reason I'm doing this is that because uh, for your assignment, I want you to be able to use this code. And it's much easier if you basically you have uh, an encrypt car method to do so. Okay, so for, so I'm just gonna basically put the for car C in message dot to character array and see, again, I've been working in Python too much. Uh, sout encrypt care. Actually, let's go ahead and just say string output is equal to encrypt car. Sorry for restructuring this. I don't remembered how I liked to do this. I just knew that the way I was doing it is off. So. But what was going on with Z? When we added Z, it was wrapping around. So that's not going to work to just add three. We actually have to do something a bit more complicated. So out. Sorry. Um, message. There's like some construction going on with a tree outside all of a sudden. It's very distracting. So. Anyway, output plus equals um, encrypt character letter C and three. Okay, so let's do this now. For every mess, so what we're gonna do here is we are going, I'm just going to basically turn this into lazy dog, just like that, one letter, one word, not worrying about spaces at the moment, because in our examples, we aren't going to bother with it. So, encrypt character. So we've got a letter that we want to encrypt with a key. So what we're going to do is we want the car cipher to be equal to some letter. But we want, and so what we have to do is we have to transform this thing. Let me quash this by saying return null. And the way we do that is basically we have, we can't just, so here's the difficulty. 
letter plus key is going to go has the has the issue of possibly going past z right because that key can be anything it doesn't have to be three so we have to be able to wrap around now the way we wrap around is modular arithmetic but if we use modular arithmetic then we can't then it's going to be between then you know we're dealing with numbers that are like 97 and up so that's just not quite going to work so what we have to do is that we actually have to do a bit of hackery over here. So letter is equal to letter minus A. Or int, actually we can just simply say int value. Okay, what does a letter minus a do anyone that's it by 97 subtract it so why would I want why in the world would I want to do that though that's exactly right was what it does but why do I want to do that so you get it only from like the numbers that are like the alphabet only including them so what we do now is that basically we're removing it from the values 0 to 25 inclusive right so if we subtract 97 from a it's going to be zero and if we track 97 from z's value which is looking at the table next to me 122 we're going to get the values zero to 25 make sense and now what we can do is we can say uh, value is equal to value plus key so now we can add that key in, okay, and mod by 26. Makes sense? So what we've done is that we've, so if we add three to Z, it's now gonna wrap around, okay? I had a question. What would happen if we didn't subtract by 97 and we try to do the same thing with mod whatever? Well, it wouldn't wrap around properly. So would it, would it go before 97 or something like that? It would be like somewhere in the weird character beats then. It, wouldn't, right. it wouldn't work. So since we subtracted 97 now to get the encrypted value, though, here's where Here's the other tricky part. Encrypted car is equal to encrypted value plus So what I did is I subtract 97 out, I rotate it the appropriate amount, and then I add 97 back in. And so now if we run this, we don't print anything out because I forgot to print out the output. Lazy dog will have O, D, C, right? So D for A. So now when we move Z forward three characters, it's A, B, C, and Y will be B because that's Z, A, B. Make sense to everybody? Yeah, that makes sense. Space, though? What? What if you put space? What's the value of that? Well, it's, gonna, it's, gonna, it's gonna be a bit of a mess. Capital W. So, what you're gonna to wanna to do is basically, we can do something like, so if you wanna handle spaces, you can do something like this. If 
uh, C is, if C is greater than A, sorry, if C is less than A or C is greater than Z, just simply add it back on. Right, if it's not a letter to encrypt, just add it into our out, just add it into the output. Don't encrypt it, right? Does that make sense? Yeah. And so now we run it, lazy dog. There you go. So decryption is done in a very similar way. Okay, but it has one additional step. So decryption, right, which is basically uh, swapping it back out, right, letter minus A, and you might suspect that doing this would just perfectly work. So let's go ahead and take this, boom. So first, I'm gonna take this message, this is gonna be our message now, okay, and we're gonna try to decrypt it. So now, decrypted value, Decrypted car. And I forgot to do, and I misspelled up here, and that's going to bug me if I don't fix it. There we go. So if so, all I did was swap the plus to the minus. So that should work, right? It does not. It just jumbles it some more. And this is because uh, subtracting with modular arithmetic does not really work as well as you would think it does. Right here, we're subtracting three. So lazy dog, I should have gotten an L. Oh, I did encrypted. So decrypt character, so let's go ahead and run this. So I got la and eh, dog, okay? Now the reason being is that when you decrypt a negative number, sorry, when you mod a negative number, it stays negative. So to decrypt in Java, the do easy- absolute value? What? I was thinking, do we use absolute value to turn it positive or not? Uh, well, the thing is, is that with modular arithmetic, we have some tricks up our sleeves. Specifically, so we encrypted it by moving everything forward by three. Make sense? This message has been encrypted by moving everything forward by three, right? Not getting a lot of response today. So what were to happen if I were to encrypt this message again by moving it forward 23 more characters? I get lazy dog. So why did I get when, so I encrypted it by three, then I encrypted it by 23 more. What's three plus 23? 26. How many letters in the alphabet are there? 26. 26. So I've rotated it full. So I did a full rotation of the alphabet total. So what we can do to decrypt is just in please take our key and rotate by the uh, by the amount that's missing. So instead of subtracting the key, we're going to add twenty six minus the key. And that will move it forward the amount that it needs, that will move it forward the amount it still needs to go forward. So if I encrypt, so if I decrypt this character now, so it changes message to decrypt um, three, it now should work. I will post this for you, but this is, going to be useful for doing your encryption and decryption.
I have a question. So wait, we we only get the same letter if we uh, encrypt by twenty six, right? Because we right. have so uh, I thought there was twenty three. So we did three first and then twenty three after, and that right. gave us the entire thing. So you have right. to. So what we're doing with encrypt is that we are encrypting by the key. And then with decrypt, essentially what we're doing is we are encrypting by the, by the, minus. By the amount that it would need to do a full rotation. OK. So the flaw of the Caesar cipher is that it basically does one key per letter. OK? Sorry, it does one key for the entire message. Right, so all, all letters have the same character that we use, right? So basically how many, so if I gave you this scrambled message over here and you knew that it was a Caesar cipher, how many, how many decryption attempts would it take for you to decrypt the message? Like one. Like one. If, or, if but you if, knew. But let's say I use a different, but let's say I'd used a different key, like maybe 13. What would the mess? What would the? How many attempts would it take for you to find that at most? Twenty six at most. It would take me basically 25, 25, yeah. 25 times. Uh, twenty five times to decrypt it, right? Because there was twenty five possible keys that are meaningful. Okay. So not really good. Uh, so Wait. let's. So yes, let's. Sir. Yes. What if you use a, the key like a very big number? It wouldn't matter since you just use modular, right? Right. So what were you, so so using a single key for the entire message is kind of worthless. So let's go ahead and go from um, so what we're going to do is we're going to skip ahead from from basically um, from from basically the Roman times. <coughs> Sorry, been sneezing a lot today. We're going to skip ahead from Roman times to. Um, to basically stuff to a cipher that was used even up through World War One, which is the Venier cipher. And the idea here is that you have the plain text that you want to encrypt. Again, here's our attack at dawn message. And well, instead of choosing a key, we choose a keyword, lemon. And we just repeat it as many times as it takes to be as long as the key. So we have attack at dawn, and so we have lemon, lemon, le. All right, and essentially we use this: the plain text plus the key plus the key word everywhere it lines up with the letter. So A get A gets the key L, T gets the key E, T gets the key M, A gets the it gets O, C gets uh, N. So it keeps going again and again, again and again, and we have this table, but essentially. It works the same way as Caesarian cipher. Uh, the only difference is that basically we would be using zero for A, and then L would be using its ASCII character uh, amount, and we add that. Hence, we get L. Then essentially we add T to E, and so we would get X, right? Because, and then we would add T to M, and we'd get F. And to decrypt, we'd just use the decryption uh, method. Does that make sense? Essentially, each letter is a different number. And you can use this table to kind of uh, to kind of figure that out for encryption and decryption. But you know, we can use the computer to do us do this for us. Now it does have some uh, some issues. For instance, there's things like this, like where we have the plain text and we have a key over here, where if the key is too short or things, we can um, end up with repeated. Ooh, we can end up with repeated bits in our ciphertext, so that helps. That there's also stuff called the uh, Friedman text frequency analysis. This is stuff that you maybe would learn in a security class. But point being is that it's not perfect. The only perfect way is what we call a one-time pad, but. Even then, there are ways of attacking the one-time pad by just simply attacking, the, physically attacking the person who has a one-time pad. There is, and so because I'm talking about cryptography, I should mention that basically there is no such thing as an unbreakable code. Um, if you cannot attack the code, attack the people who have the code. There's no, 
There is no cryptographic defense against the subpoena. There is no cryptographic de defense against the baseball bat to apply to your kneecap. There is no way of keeping information perfectly safe. So that being said, you can just make it as frustrating as possible to get. So um, now decrypting the veneer cipher is annoying to do by hand, hence you've got this table over here. Um, and then you have your keyword, which you probably memorize, but you know, easy to crack. So what if you want to basic, if you don't have access to computers and you want to encrypt something? That's where the Solitaire cipher comes in, which basically is an encryption algorithm using a deck of cards, okay? So the idea here is, um, now actually the deck of cards is kind of brilliant because uh, how, many deck, how many cards minus the jokers are there in the deck of cards? Your standard deck of playing cards. 52. Two. 52, what's 52 divided by two? 26. 26, 26. That, is such an, that is just such an amazing coincidence that it can't help but be used um, in a deck of cards. So I do actually have a deck of cards in my desk, um, which let's go ahead and stop sharing. Well, I'll stop sharing in a second. But the idea here is that we apply, um, is that what we're gonna do is that we've got basically all the number, we're gonna assume that we've got uh, numbers from 26 or one to 26. Essentially, we're going to use two suits. We're going to use the aces and we're going to use the uh, spades just to, sim to simplify it. So we're going to plot. So basically, the ace of hearts is going to be assigned the value of the key value one. The ace of the two of hearts is going to be assigned a key value two, and so on and so forth. Uh, the until we get to ace of, uh, I'm sorry, the ace of of spades, which will be assigned, I think, 13. No, it'll be assigned 14. And then the, well, so we're gonna do that for one, for those cards. And then when we get to the joker, we're also gonna use two jokers, sorry. We're also gonna use two jokers. Uh, you tip, the deck of cards includes two jokers. Any deck of cards will have two jokers in it. We'll, uh, we'll let one be A and the other be, uh, be B. Okay, so now that we've got the idea, we're gonna just forget about the cards and we're just gonna use numbers. One through 28, where 27 and 28 are our jokers, okay? Now the way this works is actually pretty interesting. First off, let's say that you and me want to communicate, okay? Uh, from, we wanna communicate secretly using this deck of cards, okay? So what we do is that we memorize an initial setup of the deck of cards, okay? An initial setup. And why do we memorize it? Because, uh, you know, any adversary you're fight, uh, fighting might be, an ad, uh, might be a fan of Neil Stevenson and know about this algorithm. So we memorize the initial setup of our deck of cards, okay? Let's go ahead and we're gonna use this as our, as our memorized ordering for the deck of cards. Now that might be hard to remember, but essentially what we're doing is that we're just simply uh, basically go counting up by threes and wrapping around. So one, four, seven, ten. 10, right? See, we're counting up by threes until we get to 28, which is the joker, and then we wrap around. 28 plus three, modular arithmetic, is three, six, nine, 12, 15, and so on and so forth. Makes sense? Good question. Yeah. So you, you, we use two aces, two twos, and like, how do we make 54, uh, 50, yeah, 52 numbers? We're, we're only using half the deck, we're only using half our cards. So, you, so one, for, so we, like, we have two aces that we use, one of them represents one and the other represents two, and then that's how we- One of them, no, no, one of the aces represents one, the other one represents 14. Oh, oh I see, I see. So we have all, so basically we're using all the hearts and all the spades and we're forgetting about clubs and diamonds for simplicity's sake. Because 
doing this for one through 50, because doing this for one through 54 would not fit on a single line. It would be hard, much harder to debug. So we're just using it for, a, we're only doing it off a half deck of cards. Make sense? It works just as well with the clubs and uh, with, with a full deck of cards, but for right now we're gonna pretend that cards only comes in deck of, 20, uh, of 28. 26 cards plus the two jokers, okay? So is we're gonna- Is the one or is the spade the, the, the one? Which one's the one in 13, for example? I just doesn't uh, matter. The, 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 it doesn't really matter because we're dealing with numbers, but for my examples, I always do the red cards as one and the black cards as, as 14 and up. So the ace of spades is 14, the ace of hearts is one, and the king of hearts is 13. But all we have to, but we can forget about the actual like aces and jacks and all that and instead think about the numbers one through 26. Make sense? Each of those cards has a numerical value. So the encryption algorithm, so what we do is that basic, so the way this algorithm works is now that we've memorized this, when we want to encrypt a message, we take our uh, configuration of our deck and what we do is we basically start using our deck to generate a key for a letter. To generate a single key, we have to, shuff, we have to shuffle and manipulate the deck in a specific way because we want the um, person, our recipient, to be able to shuffle and manipulate the deck in that specific way as well, okay? And this is to generate one key. Once you generate an, a key and you need to generate a second key, you continue from the point you left off and shuffle and manipulate the deck again. So how do we shuffle and manipulate the deck? Okay, so the first thing you do is you find, all right, and I'm going to go ahead and get this, uh, I'm gonna split this up. So we've got our, so first thing we do, actually I've got examples here. We find the A joker, which is 27. Okay, so, so remember, we mark one as A, one joker is A, one joker is B. Uh, if you don't know which is which, by the way, uh, one of your jokers will be black and white and one of your jokers will be colored, right? So here's, right, the black and white joker. And I know you can barely see me, but, and so see, one joker is gonna be colored, one is gonna be black and light. Let's let the colored one be A. So find your colored joker. Simply move it to the card beneath it. If it's the last card in the deck, just simply swap the, just simply exchange uh, the top card with the bottom, sorry, the top card with the bottom card. Basically, you just swap the, a, the joker with the card beneath it. So, and I have a video, again, I've linked a video that goes, goes up to that. So say your joker's here at the top, you just put it beneath it. Now we do the same with the, with the Joker B, but we move it down two cards, okay? Make sense? A Joker goes down one card, B Joker goes down two cards. Then we do what's called the triple cut, where we exchange all the cards above the top Joker and the bottom Joker. Then we do something called the count cut, where we count down from the top card by the quantity cards equal to the bottom card. So say that you've got a two, so we're gonna go and take a look at this. And then the last step, you basically uh, look at the top card value and count down uh, to find out what your key is. So let's see if this in action. I know it's super uh, confusing, but it's better to show it with examples, okay? And again, for a full example, I have it linked on the Canvas page right here. So assignments, so if I go over here to assignments, um, solitaire encryption, this is a six minute video just showing the very, how to do these manipulations. It's wonderful and nice music too. So, all right. So we're gonna start with this configuration for our deck of cards. So what we're going to do is that we need to swap 27 and two. And that's what happens over here. 
I don't know why the arrows are all messed up for this, but we swapped 27 and two. So 27 and two were up here. Step one is that you find your 27 and move it down one. Make sense? The 27 is the red joker, right? Color joker, yeah. But again, it's just, in terms of your algorithm, it's 27. All right. So you so swap. We find, so we find the letter below the red joker and we swap it? Yep. So you see, we had 27 and the two of hearts, so we swapped it. Oh. Next, we move 28 two down. So let's see, where's 28? 28 is here. So 28 was here, so we're gonna move it down two. Notice we swapped it so that, so now it's over here. We swapped it two down because the number on top of the red joker was two, that, is that the? No, no, no. Oh. 27, you always move, step one, you always move 27 down one card. You always move 28 down two cards. Oh, I see, okay. All right. Next is the triple cut. Here's everything that's before 28, the top joker. Top, the, doesn't matter if it's 28 or 27 here. We wanna take everything that's, that's above 28 and below 27, okay? We swap them. What so happens if one of the jokers is like... So here, we take 20, so notice all these values got moved over here and all these values got moved over here. What was that? What happens if one of the jokers is like near the edge, like so you can't move it? Then you swap, if it's at the end, then you don't put any values above it, but you take all the values and move it below it. Right, so let's say 26 is our joker, right? So you take all these values over here and move them below 26. And then it would be 28 through 26, and then these fellas. Make sense? Wait, how are we looking at it? So is, is number one the top card, or is 26 the top card? How is the deck? One, this is the order of the deck. Oh, sorry. From the right. top to the bottom. Okay. So now what we do is something called now we do the, um, so now this is the configuration before we do step four. Okay, we've just executed step three. Let's, we look at the bottom card. It's six. The first six cards of the deck are five, eight, 11, 14, 17, and 20. So what we do is that we move them, but uh, we move them to the bottom of the deck and then move six beneath that. So see, we just simply snip these guys and did that and put them over here. So now here's our cards. So now the last step is to figure out what the key for that specific letter is, 23. So we look down for the 24th card, which is 11. So that's gonna be the key for our first letter. Okay. So these, um, these operations can be a bit of a pain. I highly recommend the way you construct this is that you do four, is that you do five methods, one for each step, and basically implement and test each step as a separate method. Now doing this with an array list is annoying and super time consuming because array lists are not good at this kind of thing. But linked lists, which is what the topic of this week's um, material is, are. Linked lists are amazing at this, actually. Linked lists are perfect at splitting, uh, think, at, split, uh, at, at basically any situation where you want to split something up. So let's go ahead and I'm going to go ahead and just simply show with kind of a full deck of cards because it's easier to illustrate on my camera. So where are my jokers? One joker and another joker. Right? So the idea, so let, I'm gonna illustrate this by doing, by showing you how I would solve the triple cut with, um, let's see, the triple cut. Ah. 
that is not working as well as I thought it would. So there we go. So if I were, had my joke, so I've got these cards over here, right? Say for instance, though, that I, how would I, what's the easiest way to do the triple cut, right? Here's my joker and all the cards above it. And here's my, well, that's not a joker, that's just a trash card. Here's my joker and all the other cards that are below it. So, actually, let's see. I need to swap this around because I messed it up. So here's my joker, all the cards that are below it, and here's my joker and all the cards are on top of it. And here's all the cards in the middle, right? The easiest way to do this is basically to take these is to basically take this these cards that are all above the Joker and all these cards that are that were below the Joker and just do this. That last bit was just me slapping it on the bottom. And the reason for this is because why is it why? Let me pin my video. Okay. Um, and the reason for this is that when we deal with linked lists, linked lists are especially good at splitting and recombining stuff. Yes, to get the key, next key stream value, we just repeat the steps over and over again from the spot you ended at. So let's go ahead and take a look at how this works in detail. So we find our Joker A, we move it down one spot. We find Joker B, we move it down two spots, right? Next, what we do is the triple cut. So let's find all the cards that are above, joke, uh, all the cards above the first Joker, all the cards that are below the second Joker, wherever that guy is hiding. That's why you do it with small with a smaller deck, Andrew. Swap them so all the guys go down here. All right, so we've got a six of diamonds here. So, right, we were doing... I'm going to just treat it as though they're hearts and clubs, okay? Do we repeat 26 times? I'm going to just treat this as though it's a six of hearts, so I'm going to say six, okay? Because we'd only be doing, because just simply, I don't want this to take even more time. So six, what we do is we look at the top six cards. One, two, three, four, five, six, and move them down. Put the six back there, okay? And now for to get our key stream, we look at the top card. Which ironically, is the six of hearts. So we look, so we look at the thing at index six. Zero, one, two, three, four, five, six. Two. So our key for this one is two. Make sense? And then what we would do to get the next key is that we would repeat. We would move this guy down one card, we'd move this guy down two cards, we do a triple cut, move these above, these below, look at the bottom card, it is a six of clubs. So six plus 13, right? And remember we're treating the clubs as spades because otherwise, let's just be silly. So six plus 13, so that'd be 19 cards. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19. Move all those cards beneath. Look at the top card. It's a queen of, queen of spades, so that would be queen's value, which is 12 plus 13, so 20, so the 25th, so index 20, uh, five. 12 plus 13, index 25, zero. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one, twenty-two, twenty-three, twenty-four, twenty-five. 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25. 
two. So that's going to be, and of course, I just messed everything up by jostling two cards out of there. But now it's a two. Two, uh, a black two, which means add 13 to it. So that is, our key is 15. It's actually a fairly secure method, although there are, although there are, the manipulations can be a bit weak, but this is in general how it's, how, how to use it. Now, that being said, I would, I would not Im uh, immediately launch into trying to solve the encryption. All right. Instead, what you should be focusing on, whoops, hopefully I didn't give anybody vertigo just doing that. What you should be uh, focusing on for this first lecture, sorry, for this first thing, and yes, I know I just used it most of the lecture to explain this homework, but I wanted to make sure that basically to, to, to explain the optimal way to do this after teaching this multiple semesters. Um, Essentially, your program's got three compact parts, one of which I've already done for you, which is the actual physical act of encryption. Okay? Here, you're going to encrypt the, you're going to be encrypting your character, your, um, your message. Okay? So you'll use those to encrypt uh, things. I will also be uploading this video, yes. Um, the second thing you're going to need is to complete this file over here, the circular linked list. So circular linked list over here, which I've written for you. Um, you are going to want to, so what you need to, I've done a lot of it for you. But here's what you're going to want to do. You're going to, going to want to complete the constructor, the get node function, the add function over here, the remove functions, and you're going to want to implement get and set, but you can basically copy those from the code I give, I give you. Uh, this two string is, this two string works. It might crash your program, but it works. It will crash your program if you didn't program it correctly. So this will work unless you, unless you messed up. So this, sorry? You can't see your screen. Seriously, did I not start sharing? All right. What, what is that for though? What are we gonna use this uh, circular link list.java class? Yep. I provide you with the circular linked list to do a lot of the assignment. So well, this is the linked list that we're going to use to encrypt, right? This is right. The function. This is the linked list that you're going to use to represent the deck of cards. Okay. So what you're going to want to do is implement the get node, the add methods, the remove, and that's about it. There's also a get and set that you probably need to implement, but honestly, get and set are super easy. You can just copy and paste it from the videos that I do. Um, then I have this two string method, which will print it out, but if you didn't write it correctly, it will, it will crash your program. So that's a deliberate thing on my part. Um, doesn't Java have linked lists? Like, it, or? it does have linked lists, but, um, I need you to I need you to learn how to write it. Oh, all right. Because um, as they say, it builds character. But seriously, the only way that you're going to understand is you have to understand linked lists in order to progress in this class. Because otherwise, if you can't write a linked list and linked list method, you're going to have a seriously difficult time. Um, because it's all about how memory location works. This list iterator, you don't need to worry about. It was for um, it was for a, it was for as it says a different assignment. You should not have to change it. I use this for I use this uh, for both. I use this for two different assignments. One of which is for twenty one sixty eight, and the other one's for fifty sixteen. Okay. So here, don't change this unless you want to make it harder. And then over here, you can debug it over here. So the circular linked list class has already been provided for you. So you want this, 
And then I'm going to upload two more files, which is this encryption file. And then I'm going to give you a small outline on the encryption. Okay. Any other questions? So when we do the thing that you, you try to explain to us with the cards, we're just going to use half the deck, right? Yes. And if we get like the card at, at, at index, I don't, the, the card, like the 26th card, that's going to be index 25, right? Index Since 26. It effectively cool. ends up being index 26. Oh, so we. So when for the fifth step, you look at the call. You look at the top card. So if the top card is twenty three, you get the twenty fourth card, which is index twenty three. Oh, so you get the index that you get there. Okay. Mm -hmm. Other questions. Because if so, that is all I have for class today. Today, I know, was just a lot to go over this assignment, but I want to, but I'll be posting, but um, I know it was a lot to go over, um, but the videos on solitaire encryption should help you. I will be uploading this video pretty much now.